Hi, it's Rupert Hone here from Action Coach near Kinross. I'm joined today by Steve McNally of McNally Recruitment. Morning, Steve. Good morning, Rupert. How are you? Very good, thank you. Very good. So, good. Th- thanks for thanks for joining us. We we <laughs> we know you're in recruitment. What what took you into recruitment in the first place? Um, I actually got into recruitment by accident, complete and utter accident, actually. Um, I'd done mostly sales jobs, sales types of jobs, from insurance to uh, capital equipment, um, to phone systems, uh, phone systems on hold where there's a, a, a personalised message left for businesses. And um, I got made redundant and was obviously looking for a, a job and... I think in those days I was actually looking at the newspaper rather than uh, the internet and there was an advert looking for some somebody from a recruitment agency. Um, so I uh, replied to that advert and they invited me through uh, for interview. But what I thought was is they were interviewing me to find me a job. Um, but when I got to the interview, to my extreme shock, this was actually an interview to work for them. Now, um, in the past, whenever whenever I've gone for an interview, I would usually do a lot of research on the per- the, the company that was interviewing me. I would usually prepare literally 20 questions that I'm going to ask at the interview. Um, and it always proved that I was well prepared, but this took me by complete surprise because I didn't realize it was an interview to actually work for them. Um, anyway, I obviously did okay despite the lack of preparation. Uh, met the met the owner and they invited me through for a second interview. At that point, I was in Dundee and they they were based in Edinburgh, um, which I was always very fond of as a city. And um, they invited me through for the second interview and I was offered a job as an IT recruitment consultant, uh, mainly working on the contract side. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, these people basically taught me the basics and the, the things that are the most important within recruitment and um, I absolutely loved it. Um, so I had quite a number of years within IT recruitment. Um, I had a slight break and then I went into architecture recruitment as in architects who design buildings, completely different, but again, I loved it. You got to see all these amazing designs that the architects would come up with, most of which weren't built, but it was just great to see their ideas uh, I did a bit of engineering recruitment in Sydney. I did a bit of oil and gas recruitment in Dundee. And then when we returned to Scotland, um, so me and my wife had basically spent about 12 and a half years working our way around the world as English teachers. It's just kind of a little dream that people have, you know, travel the world. And ours was meant to be two years, but it ended up being 12 and a half. Um, and then when we came back, I'm like, I need to get a job. and. Uh, my first port of call was, yeah, I'll go back into recruitment. And I was basically offered a job in Aberdeen, although I was living in Dundee. We came back here because we were expecting our first child. So it was all kind of a, a very natural progress. Um, anyway, I was offered a job up in Aberdeen. They wanted me to start up their IT division, um, which they, they'd never had. Um, seemed like an excellent job, but kind of just sat on the couch and I turned to my wife and said, why am I doing this for somebody else again? Because I have done it several times and made these companies a lot of money. And she says, it's exactly why are you doing it? Do it yourself. You always said you wanted to, which which you did. So that was it. Um, McNally Recruitment was um, born sitting on my couch in August 2019. And it was a bit like a, an apprentice type moment. I had the the logo, the the colours, the the strap line all designed within about an hour of deciding to start McNally recruitment. Fantastic. And and just tell us what what's what's different? What do you do differently at McNally recruitment to the other recruitment agencies that are out there? Um, in comparison to the first recruitment consultancy I worked with, nothing different. I do exactly the same. And it's all about focusing uh, on the candidates and the clients by face-to-face contact. Now, when I started in recruitment, there was no such thing as LinkedIn. Um, There was no kind of social media at all uh, even existed, really, that anybody used. So it was the old adage of you would put an advert up uh, on a job board, you'd get a load of replies, and then you would phone them up and arrange to meet them face-to-face. Um, 
compared to the other companies that I worked for after the first one, um, the difference is we focus on face-to-face -face contact. <laughs> um, and with the advance of technology, especially AI and machine learning, ML, um, it's going the opposite direction these days. Um, people are getting automated messages um, that maybe sound okay, but they're very clearly not, not at all personalized, not using any characteristic of the person sending the message. And I think that's kind of what differentiates, well, I know for a fact it's what differentiates us because I continuously get told the same thing by clients, by candidates. You know, you're, you've got a lot of attention to detail. You you tend to give a story about the candidates, like you've, you've met them, like, well, I have met them. I've interviewed them before I've sent them to you. And and same with the candidates. They're like, well, you always give us feedback. You always reply. I'm like, well, I know that's what you're supposed to do because that's what I was taught. That's the way I was taught to do recruitment. So I've just always gone by that method. And now it seems to be a bit of a speciality, which is good from my point of view, um, because you will stand out. But uh, yeah, that's what we do different as we just take time getting to know the clients and the business, their culture, the working environment, uh, their interviewing processes, the people that are going to be interviewing. And we take a lot of time getting to know the candidates chatting to them, speaking to them about their life aspirations, career aspirations, their, 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 their personal setup, because it all affects what decision they're going to make next. Um, so we don't just work off of CVs, we'll actually get to know people rather than CVs or job specs. Yeah. So what, what is it that you, when you're recruiting for someone, how, how do you go about working out who the best candidates or the best pool of candidates are? The only way you're going to find out is by speaking to them. It's it's that simple. Um, with IT, it's usually quite specific in what the requirements are. Um, there might be a, a platform or a program in language or a database or a particular type of project that somebody's worked on or a, a type of cybersecurity or cloud. You know, so those bits are very specific and they are keywords. However, anybody can put these keywords on their CV or LinkedIn profile. And whilst you might get initial, um, you know, come back on, the, the, this is the, the pool of people I have, it's basically doing it the old fashioned way, contacting these people on an individual basis and then arranging for, to have an interview. I mean, I will never ever uh, represent a candidate or a client without having met them. Um, now, obviously, with the modern technology, we can do things like this Teams, which is okay, not perfect, but at least you see the whites of somebody's eyes. You can see the expression on their face. You can pick up on the body language. So it's 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 not ideal, but it's, it's not bad, and it's better than a telephone conversation. But um, that's I think that's the difference. Um, technology is wonderful used in the right way, and it can certainly speed up a lot of processes. But what, uh, what AI can't do is tell you if somebody is a good fit for that client because they've never met. They can't possibly figure out what kind of character that person is. And that's very important these days, even more so now, actually, than ever before. Yeah. So, so you, you started off, you started your own business, summer of 2019. Yeah. You, you had the colours, you had the logo. <laughs> You set set out set set out going. Twenty twenty was an interesting year. Um, yeah, so I've had uh, a very unusual start to my business. Um, obviously, started in the, the late summer twenty twenty, but then uh, twenty nineteen. But then I was due my first kid, so the first couple of months were really just setting up, getting the the groundwork in place, CRMs, websites, all that stuff, and then Lily was born in the November. So pretty much had November and December off uh, to help support my wife. So really only got going on the 6th of January, 2020, and then Friday, the 13th of March, 2020 happened. And uh, I remember having just had a fantastic day. I'd met three superb client uh, candidates in Edinburgh, face-to-face, -face, in a cup of coffee. You know, take the train through. And I popped into a pub, Mathers in Edinburgh, that I'd never been in before. I knew it was an old-style pub. I thought, a pint here. I remember standing there watching Rugby Cancer, like, eh? 
Rugby's cancelled. And that pretty much instantly killed my business um, because I had no contact list. I'd been out of the country for 12 and a half years. Uh, I didn't have LinkedIn before when I worked in recruitment, really, apart from maybe a four-month stint doing the oil and gas. So I had no basis to, to try and build a business on. But even if I did, it wouldn't have mattered because nobody anywhere was recruiting. Uh, quite the opposite. It was furlough, it was redundancies, it was people just leaving and having a career change. So it, it, it did instantly kill my business. Uh, however, you just had to, you know, keep fighting. Uh, I actually opened up a second office in Aberdeen. I hired a guy who had experience in energy uh, recruitment. So when I started my business, I had this ridiculous idea that I was going to do IT, I was going to do architecture, I was going to do energy. And one good thing about lockdown is it gives you a lot of time to think and analyze what you're doing. And it, I, I did very carefully have a lot of, you know, self-questioning about what am I doing here? And I, I very quickly realized I can't do three divisions. So I shut down the architecture because it was dead at that point in time because I'd met an old client and he's like, no, we've no work up here. And he was a huge practice. Um, so I made that construction that can be revisited at a later stage. So oil and gas, and then I got told, oh, oil and gas, terrible word, be better with energy. I'm like, okay, that's, that makes sense. So I opened up an energy division. And obviously in Aberdeen, you need to have an office. So I hired a guy uh, to do that. And he did have about five years experience. But unfortunately, life took uh, quite a, a severe turn at the exact same time. Um, my wife was diagnosed with breast cancer, and um, a few weeks after that, my, my mother had a stroke. So uh, it all happened at an incredible bad timing. Um, I'm trying to get the business up and going, and all these things happened, you know. Um, and then my wife went through three months of cancer treatment. Um, we decided we didn't want to put my mother in a care home because it was impossible for her to live upstairs. We'd set up home and look after her. So I went from <laughs> trying to run a business to looking after my wife, my newly born uh, child, daughter, and my mum, all at the same time, and moving to a new home that had to have ground floor, bathroom. And yeah, it was a bit of a, a, bit of a, a bit of a challenge, to say the least. So what were the things, because to... To come through that, mm. I mean, to come to come through COVID by itself, let yeah. alone COVID. Yeah, you <laughs> your, 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 your wife having one of the worst sets of diagnoses that you you you, you hope you never have to hear. Yeah. yeah, and and your mother-in-law, the whole thing. Your mother, actually. Mother, sorry. Um, so <laughs> sorry. Uh, so all all of that. That takes a significant amount of resilience to come through and be sitting here um, mm. talking about it today. So what were the things that you did that helped you have the resilience to fight all of that? Uh, it's, a, it's a strange question. Well, no, it's not a strange question. It's an excellent question. It's a hard one to answer. I mean, to be honest, in, in, when I did sales at the beginning, um, and in all the recruitment ages, I always ended up being the top performer wherever I worked. It didn't matter what job. At some point, I would be the top salesperson or the top recruitment consultant every single place I worked. And that was purely down to self-determination. It wasn't about winning awards. It wasn't even about being the best. It was really just about doing the best, the job to the best of my abilities. And as a result of that, again, by accident, not by design, I ended up being the top performing person in all these companies. Um, so I, I certainly have this very, very strong self-determination. Uh, and when you set up your own business, I banks, I didn't have investors. All of this was money that we'd saved working in the Middle East for the, the previous seven years as English teachers. So we'd saved up quite a bit of money, which was meant to be a nest egg and meant to set us up in a new home. But by my wife's incredible support and encouragement, um, 
I knew that if I let this business fold, we'd lost all our money. There was no way to recover that money. Yes, it could go and uh, work for somebody else, but then that would be a salary. I'm not recovering really the money that we'd invested yeah. into the business. And that's probably the main factor is that I knew that this is our money, me and the wife's money that we worked extremely hard for. Don't get me wrong, it wasn't such a hard life um, working in the Middle East or South Korea or any of these places, but you were away from family for a lot of time. And because of that sacrifice, our reward was the, the savings we had. And um, that was what kept me, kept me driving. In fact, during COVID, I ended up being a, a food delivery driver for Just Eat and Uber Eats just to have some money coming in. Um, but after my wife finished her cancer treatment, which would have been round about the April uh, 2021, it was all very successful. Well, by that point, my mum had settled into a new home. Um, I'm like, right, let's get back on it. And I remember starting the business in, in full time without COVID per se on the 10th of May, 2021. And within the first week, I made my first placement. Yeah. So, you know, if I can do that, then I'm like, you know, I can, I can do this. I can do this. Uh, but, you know, I've made <laughs> hundreds of mistakes along the way, which I'm still learning from. Um, unfortunately, the guy up in Aberdeen basically took extreme advantage of the fact of my situation because I was not having daily meetings with him. I wasn't able to meet him in Aberdeen because there was a lot of restrictions about who you could meet and where and when. So I wasn't really managing him as a manager normally would. Pretty much left him to it, to do his own thing. And I didn't challenge him. I didn't challenge what he was doing. I didn't make him accountable for what he was doing. And then he left the business and cost us, you know, 20 odd grand in, in just salary alone over the nine months that he was with us. And uh, yeah, it kind of disheartens you a wee bit. You know, here's somebody with experience. Here's somebody that's got drive. The guy's got a wife, kids and a mortgage. He should be motivated. And I'm giving him autonomy to pretty much build his business like his own miniature business to anything he wants it to be. But he went away off and what have you. And oh, well, there you go. That's, that's a lesson learned. Um, but then I thought, you know, somebody gave me a chance when I was younger. I want to give. I want to give back, and then I gave a couple of young people a chance, and uh, for over a year, and that I ended up in disaster as well. So, what can you do? <laughs> well, you just have to keep keep the, learning, I suppose. Yeah, I mean the 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 journey through business is it's a bit like um, a bit like being on a roller coaster. It's exactly like being a roller coaster. Yeah, uh, and the big thing is that you know, so long as so long as every every time something doesn't go as you'd like it to go, you learn from it, then it's not a yeah. loss. You know, I mean, I go to a lot of events where you hear very successful business people talk, and it's, it's incredible that they do kind of tell the same story. Yeah. Um, uh, I hope, I mean, most of the really successful people have had failed businesses, so I hope we don't get to that stage. Um, I mean, I'm very pleased to say that, you know, Last year, with uh, quite heavy losses, um, if an accountant looked at the books, they would have probably said, you need to shut up. You know, you need to quit. You need to fold this business. Look how much you've lost this year. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm going to turn this around. And um, I mean, if you go in a calendar year, I've done 114% of 2022 and 2023. You know, more than doubled what the, the, the fees were in that year, increased the number of placements, increased the average fee. And then even if you look at a financial fee of a lot of losses, um, yeah, we're, we're, we're almost certainly going to make a profit this uh, financial year. I don't know how much. It depends how this first quarter of 2022, 2024 goes. Um, as I, you know, as I came on, the, on this meeting today, we were nearly hitting last year's figures and just before I met you I've just had another placement confirmed that's going to start the next few weeks with a very well paying client so the bill is going to get paid very quickly so we're going to beat last year's figures financially 
for certain. Um, and uh, maybe with a little bit of profit, I'll actually be able to take some money back out of the business. Yeah, absolutely. Take a bit of pressure off. So where, where do you want the business to be in five years? I've actually got very, very clear uh, ideas of what I want to do. Um, that first recruitment consultancy I worked with, they had a, a particular setup where they had consultants who mainly focused on business development, and they had what's called resourcers who mainly focused on candidates, but they worked together as a small team. And I believe that worked really, really well because trying to find the business and the candidates at exactly the same time is near to impossible, if I'm honest. If you want to do it, you're going to have to work evenings and weekends. That's how I've managed to keep going. Um, plus having a very supportive wife that that doesn't give me grief about it, you know. Um, and uh, I want to really solidify our marketplace within IT. Um, we've been supporting and sponsoring and attending lots of events over the last few years. Uh, companies in the IT sector, certainly within Scotland, do know who we are. They've heard of us. They've seen us. They've seen me face to face. Um, so I want to have basically five divisions within IT. We already have kind of general IT. We have cybersecurity. We have uh, cloud. And I want to expand that into data and IT contract. And ideally, I would want to have about 15 staff covering those five sectors within a five-year period. Now, it's a goal. Whether I achieve that goal, I don't know. But it is a, a firm goal. It's a very firm structure of it. I know exactly how it would work. Um, I was very, very fortunate to get on an elevator course at the Dundee University at the Centre of Entrepreneurship. And it was just by accident I found out about it. It was a 12-week course. It was extremely intensive. It pretty much took me out of the business for six of those 12 weeks. But it was extremely helpful. Um, I can do recruitment. I know how to do recruitment inside and out with my eyes shut, no problem. But running your own business is not the same as being a successful recruitment consultant. It's completely different. And... I learned a lot on that 12 week course. And I wish I'd known about that course earlier, to be honest. Um, so when you look back over the last, the last... four and a half years, mm -hmm. what's what's the, the one piece of advice that you would give to somebody else contemplating starting their own business? Yeah, just learn very quickly what you're best at. And the things that you're not great at, don't try and do them. Get somebody else to do it. Um, when you start off your own business on your own, I think most people are quite similar. We're extremely stubborn. We want to do everything because it's your baby and it represents you, it represents your business. And you don't want and can't afford anybody to make a mistake. Now, if you're doing it on your own, the chances of you making a mistake are uh, in how, it's, how you're trade is is uh probably not it's not probably not a high risk because you know what you're doing but you know i remember spending hours on trying to get the colors right or trying to get the the jigsaw to fit like, why am i doing this i mean i'm talking days even weeks trying to do something that i'm not qualified to do where there's just people that that's all they've ever done is graphic design so give it to them to do it um, just people that know accounts. Now, I'm actually quite good with accounts, and I, I'm actually, uh, my wife calls me the Excel king because I have everything on Excel spreadsheets. Even when we're going holidays, I've got days planned and where we're going, and, you know. Um, but uh, I do manage to keep close tabs on my accounts. But again, get somebody else to do all that stuff. Marketing, get somebody else to do the marketing. You do what you're best at. And um, that's the piece of advice is don't be scared to ask people for help. And most business owners are petrified to ask people for help because you feel like you're almost giving up a bit of your business, but you're not. No. Um, and I I recognize I what your, where your weaknesses are yeah. and let somebody else do it. I, I love the story from, I think it's Grant Cardone. And he was interviewing Anthony Hopkins, the actor. Mm, yeah. And he asked him, do you have a coach? And Anthony Hopkins said no. 
I've got seven. <laughs> and there he is, yeah. one of the best actors in the world. Absolutely, yeah. And, and and they're not, his coaches are not better than him, but they're people who will help him be better than he, he is himself. Yeah, because they'll specialise in the sector. Actually, through COVID, that, that's when I was having a lot of self-questioning. Um, like, why was I so successful before? And I realised I was a specialist without knowing it. I specialised in particular sectors within IT. Yes, I actually did general IT, but actually, if you looked at all the jobs and placements I was making, they probably fell into two categories, you yeah. know? And I actually did a bit of a survey to anybody within IT that I knew. I asked them, you know, what are the niche sectors? Where should I work? And that's why I started the cybersecurity and the cloud division, because those were the two niche markets. And the other one would be um, data. Um, there is a company out there that's very well established within data, but you know they don't get all the business. So there is business to be to be had, and the, the more information which never decreases, data management is become, going to become more and more demanding, and there will be more demand for people within those sectors. And then the contract side of things, despite IR thirty five, there is a need for it in the business. You know, people need short term fixes; they need expert advice to come in and do a specific part of a project and then leave yeah. you know so um yeah so it's it's just it's, it's having that self-realization of what you're best at and not being scared to to just ask for help basically yeah, yeah. no that's look it's it's been a fabulous conversation i could keep talking talking about this all day um but yeah having that 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 determination and focus on your resilience looking for not being afraid to ask for help elsewhere getting really really clear on us your usp and specializing um and and coming back to that piece around belief you know it's 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 the old henry ford quote whether you think you can or you think you can't you're probably right yeah <laughs> and you yeah. clearly think you can and are proving it yeah. proving it right so see well, I, I, I know i can't i mean honestly this it's, before this interview, obviously, I don't look on a daily basis what my figures, but I had a wee look and I'm like, wow, okay. Uh, considering what the, this year has been really tough, I had to let a couple of young people go just due to non performance. And then, you know, ended up basically back on my own. And I've, you know, what I've managed to achieve just on my own. And then I look at the whole year and I'm like, okay, so I know I can do this. I just need to outsource certain parts of the business that allows me to do what I'm really good at. Um, but uh, unfortunately, going forward, I won't be able to take on young people because young people need nurtured, they need trained, and I just don't have the time to do it at this moment in time. Um, so I'll have to look for experienced people and just make sure I've got enough uh, capital to allow myself to hire a somebody that's experienced. And this time, I will be checking up on them. <laughs> Yeah, le learning from the learning from the lessons of the past. Look, yeah, that's that's brilliant. Thank you so much for that. Um, oh, no problem, Rupert. And we'll we'll look forward to watching your progress in the future. Here's hoping. Here's hoping. Thank you very much.